Okay, good. Uh, so welcome to today's class and uh, we are going to introduce uh, that is um, uh, distributions in statistics and as I, had, I have said that we are going to uh, that is concentrate um, uh, basically on what on the major uh, distributions okay four of them poison distribution normal distribution binomial distribution and binomial distribution so before we can start uh, that is the distributions we have some uh, that is uh, we have some definition okay um, we need to understand before what before we can um, now um, uh, continue like in most cases when we talk about uh, distribution okay most of the people think about graphs like for example they think of something like this they think uh, of uh, something like this they think of something like this okay they also think of something like this these are just bar bars they might not be that accurate they think of something like this they also think about something like this okay so distribution it's not only uh, that is a, a graph okay but we have uh, that is definition of distribution but what we usually do in med, uh, in most of the cases we usually uh, that is present the distributions in what in graphical manner like for example let me just open we have other uh, that is another slide which i would like to use so like this so you can see we have different types of distributions okay so don't confuse this don't confuse uh, that is uh, all thing uh, that is a uh, 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 distributions are only what they are the graphical um, things but they are basically the what they are basically the um, <clears throat> the graphical uh, representation okay like for example let's try and see uh, that is a formal uh, informal de uh, definition and also check on what maybe the online source uh, uh, tells us that is the wikipedia so in statistics when we talk about distribution uh, we usually mean the probability distributions okay and we shall define what do what is this uh, we are calling probability distributions okay so basically we can say that in statistics uh, like um, a distribution okay gives us uh, that is all possible outcomes of an experience of all of an experiment okay it gives us all the possible outcomes and we pl if we plot uh, that is uh, those possible outcomes they appear to to have as uh, that is a certain pattern okay or it assumes yes let me say it assumes a certain pattern <clears throat> and that pattern maybe might be uh, this pattern meaning it will follow a uniform distribution or it might be of this pattern meaning it will be what a binomial distribution don't uh, don't confuse that is uh, the binomial distribution and the what and the normal distribution we have some um, uh, that is properties which distribute uh, them like for example this is a discrete distribution that's why you can see it is deep, uh, uh, that is uh, represented in what in bar plots okay it is 
a, uh, that is um it is a discrete distribution and then normal distribution we usually say it is what it is a continuous distribution we usually say it is a continuous distribution and may run from uh, that is from negative in, uh, from zero it might run from zero to infinity okay or from negative infinity to infinity all right so uh, i want us now to uh, that is to go to the informal uh, definition and try to see uh, uh, that is uh, what uh, the definition tells us uh, about the, the, the probability distribution. So a distribution is a function that shows the possible values for a variable and how often they occur. In probability theory, uh, that is, this is the informal distribution, that it is a function that shows possible values for a variable and how often they occur. Okay, so this is proba basically a probability distribution definition. But I like the second definition because it is giving us more details. Like, for example, in probability theory and statistics, a probability distribution, of course, it is a mathematical function that, stated in simple terms, can be thought of as providing the probabilities of occurrence of different possible uh, outcomes in an what in an experiment like for example if uh, we do an experiment of um, uh, that is uh, tossing a coin okay so if we do a, a single toss we have a, a probability that maybe we will have we will get a head, okay, or we will get a tail, all right? Yes, so in that case, we have what? We have a probability. We have a probability. Like, for example, we can say, now the probability of uh, tossing uh, a coin to get uh, either a head or a tail, it is 50-50. Okay, you are not sure when you are talking ab about probability. You are not 100% sure. So if you flip a coin or toss a coin, you might get either a head or a tail because you don't know uh, that is, uh, you don't know uh, the exact outcome. But you know uh, that is the possible outcomes. You know definitely it will uh, bring a head or a tail okay yes so with that we shall uh, that is uh, we have some examples of distributions we have a uh, normal distribution student t distribution uh, always derived from uh, the normal distribution uh, then we have poison distribution this is the poison it's also known as account distribution okay because it shows us maybe um, that is the number of what um, uh, the number of possible outcomes so in or in an event then we have a uniform distribution and we have a binomial distribution so poisson distribution uniform distribution and binomial distribution are what they are discrete distributions okay then for normal distribution, student t distribution, and also chi-square uh, distribution, um, and then we have what? They are usually uh, continuous distributions. So we have a graphical representation. So it is a common mistake to believe that the distribution is the graph. Yes, as I had told you, it's very common to confuse, okay? or uh, believe that um, the, distrib uh, the graph is the distribution, okay? So, in fact, distribution is the rule that determines how values are positioned in, a, uh, in relation to, to each other. So, very often we use graph to visualize the data, since different distributions have a particular graphical representation 
a lot in statistics. Like for example, we have uniform distribution from the term uniform. So you can see our bar, they are what? They are uniform. Okay, so this becomes what? A uniform distribution. Then we have, a, that is a binomial distribution. Okay, it is at some point um, looks like uh, the normal distribution. Okay, but it is represented by what? It is represented by, uh, that is uh, bar, bar charts. Okay, and... Um, if you follow, you might see that uh, that is uh, the 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 curve, okay? The curve uh, it is what it is kind of thick, or we have thick tails, okay? Thickness, as I had said, it's what it is the um, the dis this distance, okay, between the curve and the x-axis. Like for example, you can see from normal distribution. We have what very thin uh, tails, okay? For T distribution, we have thicker tails uh, compared to that of what of normal distribution. But we, again, we shall check the difference, okay? We shall check the difference. All right. So uh, I want us now to go to uh, that is um, uh, now the 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 slides and try to check maybe or um, get more understanding uh, on the, uh, that is, uh, distributions. So as we had said earlier that uh, probability distribution, we've said that it is a statistical, it is a statistical function that describes all possible values and their likelihood within what? within a given range okay so it gives us like uh, a summary of all possible outcomes okay a summary of all possible uh, that is outcomes yes so uh, this range will be bounded between the minimum and the maximum uh, that is possible values okay like we have a bound we have a bound between the maximum and uh, that is the minimum and maximum uh, possible values like a bound if i say a bound it's like whenever we are saying like we want to integrate between zero and what and infinity okay so you can see now we have a bound that is the minimum value is zero and then we don't have a set value for for uh, that is for maximum okay but also we can say we want to integrate uh, that is all the normal distribution uh, values between zero and what and one meaning this will be more of probabilistic uh, we will be having uh, that is all the range of va all the all the values between what between zero and one so, um, but precisely, um, where the possible value is likely to be plotted on the probability distribution depends on a number of factors. <clears throat> so, we usually have some factors which affect, uh, that is, normal distribution. Like, we all affect all the distributions. We have the standard deviation. We have the skewness, the skewness, like skewness, where our data is what? Where our data is, uh, um, or it is, uh, what can I say? It is um, more situated, okay? Like, for example, we might have uh, such a graph, okay? And we might also have such a graph. Let's assume that is the y-axis, okay? So you can see, mostly in this case, the data is situated, um, uh, that is, um, to the what? All the data is more concentrated to the, to the right, okay? And this one, the data is more, uh, that is skewed, um, uh, that is uh, all concentrated to the what? To the left, okay? And then we have what? 
uh, the one with the almost zero skewness okay like the data it's what it's more it's standard okay so the um, distribution are majorly affected by standard deviation skewness and kurtosis we shall also discuss about kurtosis when we'll be discussing about the thickness and thinness of, of what of our distributions then uh, maybe some takeaways on uh, the definition so uh, that is a probability distribution we've said it depicts the expected or uh, possible outcomes uh, for a given data generating process either you are generating the data uh, in a, um, uh, that is um, a random uh, method or maybe a simulation then probability distribution come in many shapes with different characteristics as defined by mean standard deviation skewness and kurtosis and we are saying that investors use probability distributions to anticipate returns on assets such as uh, stocks of uh, time and age uh, there maybe they also compute their risks with time so now we have uh, uh, types of dist uh, probability distributions okay so there are many different classifications of distribution some of these include we have normal distribution we have the chi distribution the one i said uh, looks like what like this with the um, uh, that is n degrees of freedom okay and then the we have also what we also have um this is we've said we have normal distribution uh, and we usually say maybe a data set is normally distributed with what with mean mu and standard deviation or with uh, and uh, variance sigma squared or standard deviation sigma okay and remember we can always uh, that is um, standardize this to a standard normal distribution and for a standard normal distribution we usually say a distribution or a data set is said to be a standard distributed a normally distributed with what with mean zero and a standard deviation one okay so this is for standard normal distribution but this is for what this is for <coughs> this is for um, normal distribution generally uh, normal distribution so we really have very many uses of normal distribution okay and uh, what i want to give you an advice uh, more so when uh, we are dealing with the distributions okay for distribution even when it will come to the uh, that is the final exam you won't be tested the practical part of it of distribution but what you will be uh, that is will you will majorly be tested it is the properties of distributions like for example properties of normal distribution okay who can give me some of the pr uh, properties of normal distribution? Who can give me? Yes, someone. Okay, let me check. Yes, Nancy and Kwamboka. Nancy, we can start with you. Yes, I want to give it a try that the mean, median, and mode are equal. Mm, very correct. Yeah, that's correct. Mean, uh, median, and mode are equal. Okay. What, uh, what else? Another? Uh, Kwamboka? Uh, what if we say uh, data is normally distributed? Not the data, the, the, the values are normally they are uniformly distributed 
No, no, no. You will be. You will have talked about uh, that is uh, uh, uniform distribution. But maybe we can say it is a sim- That is um. We use uh, someone else. Yeah, bell shaped. Uh, that's why I'm saying it is symmetric. Okay, meaning uh, that is uh, <clears throat> the distribution curve can be divided into what? Into two uh, equal what? Into two equal parts. Okay. Yes, and also we can talk about uh, kurtosis and uh, yes, kurtosis and uh, skewness. Okay, we'll also talk about uh, kurtosis and skewness, whereby we'll say that uh, that is a normal distribution, okay, or here, we'll talk about it here. The normal distribution has a skewness of zero, so we'll talk about we have a skewness of zero and a kurtosis of three. If I'm not wrong, it has a kurtosis of three. Uh, kurtosis of three yes here yeah. the normal distribution has a kurtosis of three so those are also what those are also uh, other properties but you can go and research i want to give you this as an assignment <coughs> so that if you wouldn't do it then um that is you you you'll get it you'll get it uh, in what in uh, in your exams okay yes yeah. so uh, basically we have um, four major uh, all, all uh, that is three major uh, properties that is about the skewness and kurtosis properties we also have uh, mean median and modal recall and also uh, it is symmetric in shape or Whatever uh, someone has said here, it is uh, it has a bell watch. It is bell shaped. Was that yes, Salome Moeni. Yes. So uh, yeah, we have some different uh, that is uh, properties, okay, of normal distribution. But we'll talk about in depth. Uh, that is about it in depth. We are also still talking about uh, different types of the uh, probability distribution. We said we have normal, we have chi, we have binomial, we have Poisson. So the different the different probability distribution serves a different purpose and represents different data generation processes. The binomial distribution, for example, evaluates and uh, that is the um, probability of either success or uh, that is a fail. Like we only have uh, two possible outcomes, either a zero or a one. And here we usually have uh, that is some uh, conditions or some assumptions to make. Like for example, we say that each uh, trial it is uh, ident it is ident I I I D it is uh, independent and identically distributed. Meaning, outcome of one event won't affect the outcome of what of the other event. But we shall <coughs> discuss more on that when we'll be discussing the binomial distribution uh, that is as a topic, okay? So we are saying that the binomial distribution, for example, evaluates the probability of an event occurring several times over a given number of trials. And given that the prob- uh, that is the, uh, and given the events probability in each trial may and may be generated by keeping a track of how many free throws uh, a basket player makes in a game so if maybe this is the uh, that is the basket okay and here we have the ball if the that is the basketballer throws the ball and it goes through uh, that is then uh, the basket then we'll reward a one for such a case. If it fails to go through the basket, then we'll reward what? A zero 
for such case. So here a zero will uh, will stand for a failure or will uh, show uh, that is failure. Then one will be what? One will be a success. Okay. So uh, we can say that, um, for example, evaluate the probability occurring several times over what? A given number of trials and given uh, events probability and may be generated by keeping track of how many uh, that is uh, free throws a basketball uh, player uh, makes in a game where one it when it goes through the basket and zero when it is a miss another typical example it's, uh, it would be the use of a uh, fair coin and uh, figuring out the probability of the coin uh, coming up as heads uh, in what? In a 10 uh, straight flips. Then, as I had said, that uh, a binomial distribution, we usually, it's what? It's a discrete distribution opposed to the continuous distribution. Okay, so... We need to check how can these probability distributions help us. Okay, how can it help us? So this is how uh, that is uh, we can use uh, that is a pro uh, um, po probability distributions. Okay, like in uh, investment, we usually say that. Stocks often assume normal uh, normal distribution, okay. But in reality, uh, they exhibit uh, kurtosis, which is uh, with large negative and positive returns, seeming to occur more than would be predicted by a normal distribution. So even though we are saying that uh, stocks uh, stock returns, okay assume a normal distribution like for example if we have what we have uh, an investment okay and then we want to measure the what the rate of return okay so since we have a low season and a peak season and also uh, that is uh, it goes down like for example uh, the return of uh, uh, that is of investment it won't be uh, much big at, at start, okay? But it will reach a, a place where we will have what? We will have more, uh, that is, uh, uh, returns, okay? And then with time, the returns might what? Might uh, go down. But that's not the case. Why? Because we are told that uh, the, uh, now, the stock distribution they sometimes uh, that is exhibit kurtosis which is what which is a larger negative meaning it can be negative one it can be negative two or it can be negative three or can be uh, that is uh, two can be four can be even six okay because we've said for a normal distribution we have a kurtosis of three and skewness of what? Skewness of zero. So, uh, that is, we are saying that um, they exhibit, or sometimes, uh, that is the stock returns exhibit kurtosis with the large negative and positive, seeming it to, uh, to look like what? A normal distribution. But actually, it's not that a perfect normal distribution, okay? But it follows a normal distribution. Okay? It follows a normal distribution. Alright. So, in fact, uh, because stock prices are bounded by zero, but offer a potentially, uh, uh, that is a potentially unlimited upside, the distribution of stock returns has been, uh, that is described as a log normal distribution yes even when it comes to pricing of uh, maybe shares or uh, pricing of uh, stocks okay we usually use a log normal distribution why because log normal distribution um, will be uh, that is um, 
uh, that is will be bounded okay it will have some bound it will be bounded uh, that is by zero meaning we won't have uh, that is in some negative what some negative values okay so that's why even in major cases when you are asked which uh, uh, distribution are you using for that is to price your policy that is in insurance mostly they use what or in even in finance uh, to price some products they mostly use uh, that is log normal distribution so uh, this shows up on a plot of stock returns with the tail of distribution having greater thickness yes that is we talk about the thickness so like for example for a normal distribution it has a very uh, that is uh, the very small uh, that is um, very small thickness or i can say it is uh, that is it's more thinner compared to any other distribution so if maybe we get another distribution which maybe it, it has thinner uh, thicker sorry thicker distribution uh, that is tails then this becomes something else even though it is following a normal distribution but it's not a perfect normal distributions yeah that is distribution i want us maybe uh, for now to talk about we've been talking about skewness we've been talking about uh, that is uh, um, we've been also talking about uh, kurtosis what is this okay what is this are we saying it is what it's a uh, skewness or uh, that is uh, what is this kurtosis okay yes so that's what i want us now to discuss uh, that is today okay so let me try to insert a new blank because that is a, a blank uh, slide because i will need uh, some illustrations so let's start with the skewness so in real time data or in real life data uh, it rarely follows a normal watch like it's rare to get a data that follows a perfect normal distribution meaning a perfect normal distribution it has a skewness of zero and strictly kurtosis of what of three that's what is a perfect uh, normal distribution so the skewness and the kurtosis coefficients measure how different uh, how different a given distribution is from the perfect normal distribution the skewness measures the symmetric uh, the symmetry of a, that is of a distribution like for example the normal distribution is symmetric okay meaning it is like perfect the that is the two sides are what the two sides are equal even th th this uh, one which i've drawn it's not perfect because if i try to uh, that is do the mean here okay uh, that is this side won't be equal to this side okay so we have that perfect a uh, normal distribution so the normal distribution is symmetric and has a skewness of zero if the distribution of uh, of a data uh, set as a skewness less than zero then it becomes what a negative distrib uh, that is a, a negative uh, skewness okay and how do a negative skewness look like okay so we are saying that um in a normal okay if the distribution of data has a skewness which is what which is less than uh, that is it's less than um, zero then 
uh, we say that uh, that is uh, that distribution as a neg it's what as a negative skewness. Like for example, the the tail of the distribution is longer to, uh, on the left side, okay, compared on the what on the right. So it will be something like this. So the tail is longer on the what on the left compared to the on the right. Like let's say we still uh, let me try and draw something which makes sense. Okay, so you can see here. Okay, let me draw this. The second one you can just draw it here. Okay. So you can see, if we have, uh, that, is, um, uh, that is the value of skewness, if your value of skewness is less than zero, then your data will be what? Will be concentrated to the, to the right side, meaning we'll have a long tail to the what? To the left, okay? And this, in this case, uh, the mean will lie here, okay? and your median will lie here. So uh, that is mean, mean will be less than what? Less than median in that case. So in case, uh, in this case where we have this kind of distribution, okay, then the skewness we usually say it is less than what? Less than zero. Maybe it might be negative one, uh, yeah such a case okay then when we say that uh, the tail of the distribution is long to the what to the right then now that becomes what uh, right skewness okay that becomes uh, that is a right skewness and and a right skewness and a right skewness <coughs> I can see someone try to to call the group. Okay. Anyway, uh, we shall uh, check. Uh, maybe. Okay. Someone try to start a call. Anyway, let's continue. So uh, that is for this kind of uh, that is um, skewness. Our data will be more concentrated to the what? To the left, okay? And our skewness value will be uh, greater than what? Greater than zero, okay? Meaning now uh, more data is uh, that is concentrated to the left, okay? And we have the long tail on the what? On the right side of the graph. So let's try and check now that. So. We are saying this. Let me uh, clear this so that we may repeat. So we are saying that if the distribution of a data set has a skewness less than zero, then it has a negative what? Skewness. Okay. And in that case, the left tail of the distribution is longer than the what? The right tail as I have illustrated here. You can see the, the, that is the left tail is longer than the, the right tail. Okay. Then, positive skewness implies that the right tail is, uh, of distribution is longer than what? Than the, uh, that is uh, the left tail. And in that case, we'll talk of positive skewness what about now uh, like for example we we usually say uh, a normal distribution as a skewness of zero what if maybe the skewness uh, lie between what lie between a range how can we uh, say or what will we say about that uh, data set so in statistics skewness is the measure of asymmetry of the probability. Remember we say that we have a perfect skewness, 
So we have, uh, let's say, this is what? This is left skewness. We have a perfect skewness. Okay. And then we have what? Uh, a right skewness. So this is the what? The, uh, that is the different skewness we usually have. Here, uh, that is the, the skewness is zero. Here, the skewness is less than zero. And this, in this case, the skewness is what? Is greater than zero. So, in other words, skewness tells you the amount of direction of uh, skewness. Like, a departure from the horizontal symmetry. So the skewness value can be positive or negative or even undefined. If the skewness is zero, then the data are perfectly symmetrical, meaning you can divide that uh, distribution into two equal parts. Okay? Yes. Then, although it is quite unlikely for a real data, to assume what? To assume a normal a perfect normal distribution. It's very hard. In fact, uh, I can't give an example of a data set. Okay, that uh, that is that follows. Uh, that is exact, or that as a perfect what? That as a perfect uh, normal distribution. Okay, so we have a general rule of thumb, like. If skewness is less than 1, or less than negative 1, or greater than 1, then we usually say that your data is highly skewed, either to the right or to the what? To the left, depending with the, with the sign of the value. If skewness is between negative 1 and negative 0, or between negative, uh, or zero, uh, between positive 5 and 1, then distribution is moderately skewed. That's what we say. Then, if the skewness is between negative 5 and positive 5, then we usually say your distribution is uh, approximate a perfect normal distribution. Or, uh, that is your distribution is what? Approximate what? Uh, approximately uh, symmetric to the center. Okay? Yes, so that's how we can, uh, that's what we can talk about skewness. Any question about skewness before I can go to the kurtosis? Any question? Okay, let's go to, uh, that is, uh, to the kurtosis. I want us to discuss the kurtosis. And again, before I can even uh, continue, so skewness, it's always the third derivative from the mean. Okay, it is the third de uh, derivative. Third derivative from the what? From the mean. Then kurtosis is the fourth derivative from the, from the mean. Like, for example, you know the first derivative, it's, um, uh, that is the second derivative of mean is what? It is, uh, it is variance, okay? Then the third derivative is what? It is, um, it's skewness. Then the fourth, it is the kurtosis. You can go check more on that. That is uh, how you can derive uh, that is how you can derive um, um, mean up to a point you get what? Up to the point where you get um, kurtosis. So let's talk about kurtosis. What is this kurtosis? What is this kurtosis? Let me minimize this. So this is the formula for kurtosis. This is the general formula for kurtosis. But what is the, now the kurtosis? So kurtosis uh, in statistics measures the thickness of the tail ends of a distribution in relation to the tails 
of normal distribution so here we usually use the tails of normal distribution as what as a benchmark here we use uh, that is cut, uh, that is uh, distribution or the tails of normal distribution as uh, a benchmark okay good now the distribution with large kurtosis exhibit tail that exceeding the tails of what of the normal distribution five times more than the standard deviation from the mean like for example if the kurtosis we have a larger kurtosis then we'll have thicker what we will have thicker will have thicker tails okay compared to that of normal so like for example let's assume we have normal uh, tails that is the tails of normal distribution just assume that i can't be perfect to draw that okay so in this case we have a kurtosis of what we have a kurtosis of 3 if we have a grade uh, that is a kurtosis which is bigger than 3 then we'll have more thick what more thick tails okay you can see we'll have more thick tails compared to that of normal distribution if the kurtosis value is less than 3 then we'll have more thinner okay uh, that is uh, more thin uh, that is uh, tails in your distribution okay compared to that of normal distribution perfect normal distribution so the distribution with low kurtosis ex <coughs> exhibit tail data that is extremely uh, less than the tails of normal distribution like for example the tails will be more thin compared to that of normal distribution so the normal distribution has a kurtosis of 3 which indicates the distribution has neither fat or thin tails therefore if an, obser an observed distribution has a, has a kurtosis uh, greater than 3 then the distribution is said to have heavy or uh, fat what fat tails okay and if the distribution has a kurtosis less than 3 then it is said to have thin tails compared to that of normal distribution and that's what i've just summarized in what in these graphs any uh, any question any question on kurtosis okay good so if we are if we are okay with that i will just uh, introduce normal distribution okay i'll just introduce normal distribution even though we've discussed uh, that is uh, uh, more on the normal distribution and then tomorrow we shall um, that is talk about the applications of uh, that is normal distribution more so in uh, asset pricing okay or in uh, stock pricing all right yes so i'm going to just introduce normal distribution uh and then tomorrow we shall now uh, that is a uh, finish with the with the with the practical part of it uh or with the application part of it okay so what is a normal distribution so we've said it's also known as a uh, gaussian distribution and it's the probability distribution that is symmetric about the mean showing that uh, data near the mean are more frequent in occurrence than data far away from the mean that's why you can see we have most of our what most of our data concentrated to the what to the mean okay so this is this will be the mean of this uh, distribution even though it is what it's a perfect normal distribution 
So in uh, that is in graph, normal distribution always appear as what? As a bell shape, okay? And uh, for a normal distribution, it's uh, the proper term for probability uh, bell curve, okay? In fact, we've just uh, discussed this. Like in a normal distribution, the mean is zero. This is more so when we are dealing with what? Standard normal distribution, okay? The mean is zero and standard deviation is what? It's one. This is more of standard normal distribution. Standard normal distribution, it's now, we can call it perfect distribution. We can also call it a perfect normal distribution. Then, normal distributions are symmetrical, <coughs> but not all symmetrical distribution are normal. Okay? So, in reality, most pricing distributions are not perfectly normal. Pricing distribution. Rather, we said they mostly use what? The log normal distribution due to it, that is uh, its um, uh, properties. Okay? So maybe we can try and check something on the normal distribution here on the other slide. Uh, I shared the both slides with you, okay? So you can check. So we say that the normal distribution is also known as a Gaussian distribution or a bell shape, okay, distribution. It is one of the most common distribution due to uh, the following reasons, okay? It is heavily used in regression analysis. Yes, remember when we were discussing about assumptions. Remember we said that uh, that is the, um, the, uh, the, um, the error point or the error term should uh, follow what? Should follow a normal distribution, okay? The error terms should follow a normal distribution. The other thing is that... Um, <coughs> It is uh, it approximates uh, or it approximates a wide variety of what random variables and um, the distribution or distribution of sample mean with large enough uh, sample size could approximate to normal to normal distribution and this more so it will it will discuss uh, it further when we'll be talking about central limit theorem. Like, for example, what does central limit theorem uh, say, okay, in simple words? Like, as we increase the sample size, okay, when we increase the sample size, the mean of the sample size tends to approach the mean of what? The mean of the population. When we, uh, that is, when we are increasing the sample size, the mean of the sample size tends to, up, uh, that is, to approach the mean of what? Of uh, the population, okay? Yes, but you can go and check more on that. So, and we have a variety applications of normal distribution, like even in class, okay? Intelligence, that is IQ of uh, students in our class. Height of students in our class. Definitely, you will find that we have a few uh, students who are short. Okay, we have uh, also uh, uh, that is the most of the students have what have uh, that is an average height. Okay, and we have some of students are what are very tall. Few of the students are very tall. So if you try to plot that, it will tend to follow what? A normal distribution. Okay? Yes. So in biological uh, measures, and um, most of the biological measures are um, normally distributed, such as height, as we have seen here, the length of the arms, okay? Legs, nails, uh, blood pressure, uh, thickness of three bags, also and IQ tests. Like if maybe you go to interview uh, or to test people, or uh, that is on um, IQ, intelligent questions, then you will find uh, uh, some 
people or few people with what with low intelligent quotients okay and most of people with what average intelligent quotient and also very few people with what with i intelligent quotient so you can see the same it's kind of uh, following what it's kind of also following uh, a normal distribution so those are some of applications or some of examples of what of normal distribution okay any question up to that point <laughs> any question up to that point okay so tomorrow we are going to now uh, try and see when we vary or when we vary the mean okay of uh, these distributions what will happen to the to the normal or uh, to the original normal distribution maybe it will shift to the to the left or to the right when we change what when we change the mean but keeping the same what keeping the same uh, that is um ip or keeping the same what can i call this is uh, keeping the same curve okay then when we vary uh, that is a standard deviation but maintaining mean a constant uh, we will also see like you will see that uh, the normal distribution when you increase uh, that is um, the standard deviation it tends to flatten okay the peak tends to flatten but when we reduce the standard deviation the what the peak uh, tends to be what to be more sharp okay yeah so uh, for today i'll stop uh, um